And what we have is the zero knowledge, which goes here, A, B, and C. And we'll get to uh, a little issue we have with subgraphs and how we get around it um, with the um, 2D array in B. And then your input, your public input. And this is where the magic of zero knowledge and privacy comes in. We will be showing you how we, how we trustlessly enable provable integration of hidden information into your game by using these inputs. Um, and if we go really quickly, uh, just to give you a taste of the CIRCOM. We have board verifier. And let's go to board. And you can see that if we scroll down all the way here, there is a single public input, and that is hash. right? Um, and we'll get back to what all this means in a second. And for shot, there's hash, shot, and hit, which is three inputs. But if we go look at shot, it's actually two different numbers. So going back to iVerifier, we have four different unsigned 256-bit integers that we want to pass into the proof along with our, our zero-knowledge proof as uh, a trustless computation. And this allows us, by having this uh, definition of our interfaces like this, allows us to extend the verifiers in our code even before we have generated it through the yarn setup command. And if we go look at the verifiers themselves, I'm, I'm not even going to get into it. but you don't have to either is the thing. This is all handled by SnarkJS, um, the Galaxy brained Jordi Bellina and his team, of course, um, and the contributions of a lot of other people, uh, you know, but uh, they have built this automated tool that will um, handle all of your proving. You just need to give it the inputs, but it looks very daunting. Um, but if you come across this, it, it really isn't that bad. Just don't think about it. <laughs> so then we have, have uh, a minimal trusted forwarder set up so that um, we can do gasless transactions. Um, we want to do Biconomy and Taurus, which is a uh, social sign-on, uh, to allow people to sign in with Twitter or Google and uh, still also be able to pay without any gas or, or anything like that. So by using Taurus and Biconomy in combination along with all of these other mechanics and privacy and scalability, we can really approach a Web2 experience on Web3. And this requires some signature stuff, but we, we have all of that. It's very easily copyable. And the only difference you're ever going to see with ERC2771 is going to be, instead of using message.sender, you're going to use underscore message sender, the function. And this will first check if it's a, a meta transaction, if it's capable of relaying it from a signature. And um, if it's not, it will fall back on message sender. Uh, now on to the interface, where uh, essentially we just extend the um, meta transactions and the verifiers. So we have all our events. Um, and we basically emit all the information we need for the subgraph to index all of this stuff. So we have uh, the game struct, which contains a lot of uh, important information, but there probably uh, is a little bit of information that we could cut from this. Um, and basically how it works is this hit max right here, 5, 4, 3, 3, 2, sums to 17. Um, it tracks the hit nonce, and uh, whenever it gets to 17, we expect the game to be over. Um, game index to just be a nonce for making new games. Um, and, okay, so here we can see B0, B1, and this is done because the subgraph did not like having to index contracts that had parameters that were 2D arrays. So 
the subgraph won the argument. So let's go into the actual code as we start to really get into the functionality, even though it's all documented in there. So the very first thing we have are the modifiers. Um, and I'm not going to go super in depth into all of these because a lot of this is more so just solidity. But for turns, we basically just use the modulus of two. Uh, if it's zero, it should be the player who hosted the game's turn. And if it's one, it should be the player who joined the game's turn. Um, and yeah, the rest of this is just solidity. So. So for the constructor, and we'll walk through very quickly our, our hard hat deploy file, um, we have our forwarder, which just points to a biconomy forwarder, as well as uh, the two verifiers that we deploy. Um, and again, by using that pattern of having uh, the verifier interfaces defined, we can use them in our code without actually having them generated. So what we've done throughout uh, all of this is we've taken out the input section in proofs and instead we pass those in within the scope of our own solidity. And that's done basically mentally to put ourselves in the mindset that those inputs are generated somewhat trustlessly. So um, not always will uh, all of the inputs come from the parameters in here and we'll get to that in a second. For new game we see that the very first thing we have to do is verify the proof and that entails taking all of the parameters that go into this function and all the zero knowledge proof goes in. We massage the subgraph compliant parameters into something that the verifier will understand and then we pass in the input, which in our case is just the board hash. And this board hash serves as a proof that this hash is of a valid board configuration. And we will then store this in the game struct for future use. And it'll be associated with this user. So for join game, we have the same thing as new game board hash and the zero knowledge proof, as well as an index of a game which serves as a game room for a new game, or uh, if the game's already started, allows you to point at it and get data. So functionally the same thing happens here though. So there are a couple of interesting properties of how this works that introduce some kind of perverse uh, incentives in the game theory that we don't actually solve. We, we assume um, honest actors and there are totally solutions, but we'll get into in a minute exactly why we haven't implemented either of those yet um, because there are two with each their own um, issues that we need to figure out. Um, but how it works is that first we must, once we've agreed to play a game, we must put out an initial shot. And the prover needs to reactively see that shot and prove that it either is a hit or a miss to the hash that they have inputted on-chain with their off-chain computation. So we have to have this first turn and it introduces some perverse incentives that we'll talk about in a moment. Um, we don't actually address them, we assume honest actors in this game for now because it's a proof of concept. Um, but there are two different solutions uh, and we'll get into them in a moment. So the turn function takes this one parameter which is not passed into the proof which is used to access the data storage. Um, and then we have hit which is pretty much the only public input from our proof that the user gets to put in. And we'll remember that um, for new game or join game, uh, we had one public input and board has one public input. But shot has three public inputs. We're gonna call shot three, um, well, shot one, even though it's those two numbers, we're gonna consider shot and hash and hit the three public inputs that go into this zero knowledge proof. 
And going into it, we get our game out of storage. We figure out the board hash that we're going to put into this proof, the shot that we're going to put into this proof. So you can think of if Alice just played the first turn as the shot being Alice's turn and the board being Bob's board. And then in the turn after this, it will be the board of Alice and the shot of Bob. And this will just increment or, or flip back and forth. We convert uh, the Boolean hit um, to a zero or one because SIRCOM only understands integers. And then we pass it into the actual proof. And here, uh, again, this is just the zero knowledge. And then the board hash and these shots both come from the game storage. This board hash is from the game start. And the shot is from the previous turn or first turn. It, it is never given in the parameters by the person proving. The only thing they can do is assert whether or not it hit or not. And that's where the trustless uh, privacy comes in in our solidity. So really you could technically close the video right here and call it a day, but there's a lot more. And what we do is given that we know now whether or not this hit is true, there has been uh, an off-chain computation that is verifiably computable and we now can trust it, we increment the hit counter. And we emit data for the subgraph just to know what happens. So then we get to the point where we check if the game is over. And if the game is over, we're going to actually ignore this value next right here. So if it's the very last turn, you could put technically whatever you want and it doesn't matter. Um, but if the game is not over, we're going to store that in our shots so that the next turn can take it out and inject it into the next proof. So this is also another very important part of preserving the privacy while trusting that your opponent in this hidden information game is not lying. And then it just increments so that your the game knows where to go. And finally, we have the game over function, and there's not really too much going on here, so to be honest, I'm, I'm not going to talk much about it, but it just sets the game state so that it's no longer playable and, and sets some winners and stuff. You could totally, at one point, we actually had um, both an NFT that was given out and a um, an ERC-20 wager, so this is very modular, and we hope that... Uh, as you kind of watch this, you start to get your own ideas of how you can inject hidden information into your L1 applications. So now we've really gone over all of the solidity. So we split this video into multiple parts, which is why the continuity is probably a little weird, but there should be three videos dropping at once, so yeah. Uh, go check out our Discord, that's going to be the best place for you to ask questions about this or uh, any other builds that you want uh, help with or just any discussion around zero knowledge. But you can also subscribe to us here or follow us on Twitter as we release more SIRCOM zero knowledge content in the future. So check the description, links to all the socials are there, as well as links to all of the content referenced in this video. So uh, yeah, see you in the next one.